What's up YouTube? This is DEFCON 3 Security coming at you from somewhere here on Spaceship Earth. Uh, today I am in the FJ Cruiser which happened to sustain some damage a couple days ago. Uh, a tree from the city fell on my uh, car. Not an actual tree but a limb from the tree like one of the branches. I would put that branch at like 2,000 pounds. It took six guys and a bulldozer to take it off this truck. So I've sustained like front end damage, the hood, uh, you name it. There is a chance this car might get totaled out and I can promise you I'm going to get another one. I really love this car. So that's a little side note of what's going on here in the FJ Cruiser world. So I get this question a lot. People ask me about de-escalating and escalating and taser versus pepper spray versus your handgun. And uh, I don't know how many videos I can make on it, but let's make another one. Seems like everybody wants to wants to hear that video. Um, you know, if you guys go through my videos, I've pretty much talked about every topic. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the pepper spray versus taser today. So pepper spray and taser are definitely less than lethal or non-lethal alternatives to your firearm. Arguably, the taser can kill you. Some people that have like um, weak hearts or pacemaker, uh, it might actually stop their heart. Uh, one of the more common problems with the taser is that if you shock somebody, they could become stiff as a board and just hit their head on the ground and die, especially if they're running away from you. So let's say they're running and they're going at like 15, 16 miles per hour and you tase them. Uh, they could literally just freeze up and just hit the ground at 16 miles an hour. Um, so they can be dangerous. They can be a lethal option. Uh, so I, I tend to shy away from, from people who say, you know, I, I go for the taser first. Here's my opinions, guys. And again, this is just my opinion. Um, a couple months ago, I got, ta or excuse me, I got pepper sprayed by some guy who was trying to rob me. And the pepper spray did absolutely nothing to me. Yes, it burned. Um, a lot of it got into my mouth. And uh, it was hard to breathe. But it didn't stop me. I was so angry, so pissed off that this guy was trying to carjack me. Uh, matter of fact, it was this car um, that I just pushed through the pain. Uh, yes, I was blinded. But I could kind of open my eyes just enough to see this guy. And all that adrenaline just kept me going. So the whole pepper spray thing did not work. As a matter of fact, the guy sprayed me. And then when I tried to open this door right here to push myself out, he pushed the door back shut, stuck his arm through the window, and just point blank sprayed my face and it got into my mouth. Then I turned my head to the side and he got all the back of my head. Um, so I got a really good dose of it at point blank. And it didn't stop me. I still ended up chasing him down and taking him to the ground and police arrested him. This was in Stockton, California. Um, so yeah, my thoughts on pepper spray doesn't always work. Uh, if you go on YouTube and look at videos of people um, using tasers, they don't always work either. Um, as far as stopping somebody, they don't always do the trick. Police officers know this. People that train uh, or teach classes on how to use a taser they will even tell you that you know there's a lot of variables that go into the taser <clears throat> I have shot my taser a few times and there's so many things that you need to get right first the further away you are from a person the so the tasers come out right and then they hit your body and they cause you to hit the ground uh, in convulsing like a fish because it's tensing up your muscles causing your muscles to uh, contract and uh, and then you seize up doesn't always happen if you're overweight not likely to happen it works on muscles so if you're a very muscular guy yes uh, tasers can be really effective if you're an overweight guy not so much um, so when you shoot these little the taser these little prongs come out and they start off like this, and the further away you are, the further they spread out. And eventually, 
they get so far apart that if the guy's in the center, it's just going to pass them uh, right up. Um, so you got to be the right distance. You got to hit them in the right spot. If you hit somebody in the leg, you're not going to get any results. If you get one right here and then one of the, one of the prongs misses a person, it's not going to work. So it's got to be perfect. And, and that's a problem with the taser. It's got to be perfect. And then when it hits the person, uh, somebody can just tough right through it. They can just literally take the pain, pull the prongs right out. If you go on YouTube and just type in police tase somebody, you're going to see that I'm thinking like 80% of the videos, the person is uh, not going to succumb to the, to the tasing. They're going to just fight it off. So tasing uh, doesn't really work. Pepper spray, again, doesn't really work. Look at, look, go online and look up protest and you'll watch uh, the cops spray people with, with police grade pepper spray and during a protest and people will like initially grab their face and it burns and then they get back on their skateboards and or they run the other direction and so if they're able to do that uh you can imagine they're you know if perpetrators coming at you and you try to pepper spray them they're still going to be able to fight you so it's not it's not going to stop somebody not always maybe sometimes but not always so i think there's still good de-escalation tools tools in, in the sense that they're um, visual deterrents. Now I'm all about being a visual deterrent. I love the fact that people see me and they're like, well, this guy looks like somebody I wouldn't want to mess with. He's got this vest on, he's got magazines, he's got this firearm that's really shiny and big. You know, that's that's the first, um, first thing when somebody sees me. They see that I'm firm but fair. They see I'm a visual deterrent. They see that I'm armed. They see that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go to battle. Then they start looking at other things and they say, oh, well, this guy's got a taser on him. He's got pepper spray. So, you know, I got a mini arsenal on me. So my first um, way of combating somebody that's um, aggressive is to be that visual deterrent. And then I like to uh, dominate the conversation. You know, everybody has their own way of de-escalating but I firmly believe that sometimes you need to escalate a situation in order to de-escalate it not always but sometimes and again it's just it's it's not really something you acquire um, it's something that you learn over time it's all psychology you know I had to deal with a guy last week and this guy started off like at a two as far as like his aggression levels but I jumped to a six so this guy was breaking into something over here and, you know, I says, hey, bro, what the heck are you doing? And he's like, man, F you. And I just went straight from like a two to a, like an eight, just yelled at him. And man, it just startled him because he didn't expect that kind of response out of me. So sometimes, you know, you escalate it and what it does is it de-escalates the person. But if that doesn't work, uh, you're out of options, right? So you got to choose it carefully. So with pepper spray, pepper spray is scary. When you point this at somebody, they tend to back up because uh, most people have never been pepper sprayed, so they don't know what to expect, but they know that the potential for burning eyes and, and pain is there. I mean, everybody's gotten like hot sauce or soap or something in their eye that was an irritant, and they know that it's painful. Uh, and then in the back of their head, they're like, man, that's just soap. I couldn't imagine what an actual um, <clears throat> agent that's designed to hurt my eyes would feel like. So if you point this at somebody, it is definitely uh, intimidating looking. Uh, if, if I have to pull out my pepper spray, I always shake it a little bit and point it at the person. That just adds to that drama, you know, and it's all that attitude. You're like, hey man, I'm gonna pepper spray you. After that, it's gonna be nothing but bullets. So, you know, it's just, it's how you phrase it. It's how you, um, talk to the person you know so as you can see you're just sort of escalating and hope that it de-escalates the situation in my case it happens to have worked quite a few times uh, when I say quite a few times hundreds of times I've had success with this I don't hope for incidences but again I'm usually placed in areas that are a little bit high risk or actually very high risk so I, I do deal with a lot of nonsense um, the taser 
you know, it can look intimidating. You point this at somebody, everybody have seen videos of what it looks like to, um, to get tased and to actually have it work. And it looks scary, man. Um, I know that when you get in a little electric static shock, oh man, it hurts like hell, right? So you couldn't imagine like 50,000 volts uh, or a million volts going through your body. Um, that's that's a pretty scary idea. So the, just the taser alone, just pointing it at somebody can scare somebody. And then, you know, you actually get hit with it and you realize this is not as bad as I thought. So, um, yeah, the the concept of it is more scary than the actual physical um, part of it. It's like that old saying where they say, you know, that dog is just all bark. You know, I guess what they're implying is that, you know, the dog is barking loud, but it's actually, its bark is more scary than its bite or something like that. Same with like the taser and pepper spray. They, they, they may seem scary, but as far as stopping power, not really. The real stopping power that you have is your firearm. Um, and that's a whole other YouTube video. Um, but, you know, that's really the only way you're going to stop somebody if you were in a really dire situation. And that's the last resort. And that requires more than just unholstering and firing at somebody. There's a lot behind that. Like, you are potentially going to be taking somebody's life, um, you know, and there's it goes beyond just taking somebody's life there's the whole fallout of if you take somebody's life was it justified was it worth it was it necessary right so that's a whole different other topic but <clears throat> okay now if i had to choose between the two a taser over pepper spray i feel like people are more scared of a taser so if i just found somebody and they came at me and i had a choice okay pepper spray or taser i'll probably pull out my taser it's got a bright LED light on it when you flip it on. It's got a red dot that that um, points at the person or, you know, like a little laser dot. And that's scary as hell versus pepper spray. Um, but it's all circumstantial. Like, I won't necessarily pull out my taser if there's two people. If there's two people, I'm coming out with the uh, pepper spray. The taser is only good for really one person. If you got two or three people... That pepper spray is coming out because you can get multiple people. I think this pepper spray, it's called uh, Pepper Gel by Saber. You can get like 20 bursts out of this. So you can fire 20 shots uh, before it runs out, maybe even more. But uh, in my experience, I've, I've used these things. When I start to get a little old, I start spraying them just for practice. And I can recall getting like 20, 25 bursts out of it before it runs out. So I would use this if there was a couple of people and I'm trying to do a little bit of crowd control and back people up. The taser, if it's a single person, um, if it's a really big guy, heavy set, I'm not going to use my taser because uh, it's not going to do anything on him. I'm going to use my pepper spray. If the guy's really shifty and bouncing around, again, I'm not going to use my taser. Only when the guy's just kind of standing there staring at me would I use my taser. Because, again, if you don't hit them, like, in the chest, 12 inches apart, each prong, you're not going to get the results that you want. So it's just too much to gamble. Uh, and I'd go straight for the pepper spray. But if you just want to um, get somebody to back up and use that de-escalation, sometimes the taser does a trick. So I really can't teach you um, when you would use it. It's just, it's all based off of experience and attitude, how big the person is. My best advice is just take a class on pepper spray, take a class on using a taser, and then, you know, use your best judgment. You really can't teach judgment. That's just something you acquire after years of experience. Um, as far as safety, with a taser, you're not going to accidentally tase yourself unless you point it at yourself and um, you, uh, you, you know, <laughs> that would just be dumb. That would be reckless. Uh, pepper spray... So there's a difference between spray and gel. The spray, it comes out uh, just like it says. It's a spray. Psh. Pepper gel tends to come out in a stream, and it's like a gel. And what I like about it is the wind doesn't really blow back the gel. It's more likely to bro blow spray back at you because it's like an aerosol-type uh, texture to it, whereas the gel is just a long stream of gel. 
Now, I did get a message earlier, and some dude was like, uh, in the comments, and, and this guy totally contributes to the channel, so thank you for bringing it up. He said that, hey, I've been in environments where it was windy and the pepper gel was useless, and it did spray back in my face uh, when I sprayed it in the wind. So, uh, well, fortunately, today it's really windy out here. Um, so maybe we'll spray some pepper gel and we'll see if it goes back in my face to see if that uh, theory is right. Now, this is just a, a test and I'm sure that maybe in his experience he did have the wind blow it back in his face. But um, from what I gather, I don't, I don't think this is going to go back in my face if I spray it into the wind. So let's take this outside and see if this is going to go back in my face. Problem is, it's not, um, I'm trying to, trying to keep this place inconspicuous where we are. Um, all right. So let me see if I can flip this camera around. All right. So this is just a fence. Um, the wind is not coming at me yet, but we're going to hit this little wall here with some pepper gel so you can see what it's like. Bam, you see that? Just a stream of gel. Boom, look at that. It's gel-like, right? Now, we're gonna spray it at the wind. The wind is coming at me really hard. You can see these, um, this material is moving. It's coming directly at me. Spray, look at that. Nothing's coming back to me. So I'm not getting any blowback from this pepper gel and once again this is what the stuff looks like it's not necessarily gel but definitely uh, uh, thick it's got that really thick consistency to it so there you go guys I think it's a safer alternative to a spray results may vary I know that some people may have uh, used gel before and had it spray back on them but uh, in the case of me I have never had um, pepper gel come back at me I've I've gone through like four of these containers um, and when I say four of them whenever they get old again I just spray them just to kind of practice using them instead of throwing them away never had any of it blow back on me I've actually went in a full 360 degree circle uh, just like turn around and nothing ever came back in my face so if I had to choose one it would probably be the gel uh, pepper spray over a taser any day but if I've got somebody that looks a little skittish and they may be afraid of like firearms and whatnot, I would probably go for the taser just because it could back them down. Or I'd pull out the taser if I see that he's not afraid of the taser, put the taser back in, pull out the spray, and then get him in the face. Um, you got to hit this person dead on in the face or it is absolutely useless. If you get him in the chest or the arm, it's going to do nothing. So you got to get them in the face. If somebody runs at you, puts their head down. And they're going to like do one of those, uh, forget what we call that, you know, when they bum rush you, right? They run at you, grab you, throw you down. Bro, you're going to have to be quick on the draw and you're going to have to have some really good aim to get them directly in the face. You might get them in the top of the head. It's going to be useless. And even if you do get them directly in the face, there's no guarantee. Like I said, a month and a half ago, somebody tried to car drag me, sprayed me directly in the face. It did absolutely nothing. All right, trivia question. Why are bullets flat, right? They're flat. Why aren't they pointy? If they were pointy, they would go further and faster, right? This thing is flat on the end. Well, the answer to that question is bullets can be pointy. They're pointy when they're um, meant to go really far, like a sniper rifle. Handguns, um, when you shoot a handgun, it's not meant for distance. It's meant for close combat uh, fighting, and it's meant for stopping power. This blunt tip on this um, bullet uh, is designed to stop something. If it was pointy, it would just go straight through them. So that's why you have these blunt tips, these hollow points. Sometimes they'll have, uh, they'll be flatter. Uh, again, it's just designed to hit somebody and stop them versus uh, its aerodynamic properties where it goes through the air and hits somebody from you know 500 yards away so that's why bullets are blunt on handguns and 
pointed on rifles. Know your worth, know your value, value your time, but above all, above all, be safe.